This episode of the ResortLoop.com podcast is brought to you by Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. Joffrey's is proud to be the official specialty coffee of Disney. Enjoy drinks and pastries at Joffrey's kiosks throughout the parks and check out the Disney specialty coffee collection only at Joffrey's.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. We are now approaching the Magic Kingdom station. If you're planning to disembark here, please remain seated until the monorail has come to a complete stop within the station. The doors will open automatically for you to the left of our forward motion. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. And his lovely wife, Dawn. And we are here. We are in the middle of Holiday Thon 2014. This is my wife's first time, I think, being on the Holiday Thon. It is. Are you very excited? I am. But before we get started, I do want to give a little shout out to Maya that we watched you in the Disney Frozen Spectacular and we love the Olaf dance. We watched it a couple times and thought it was really, really cute. I hope the little girl that we saw and thought was you was really you, but um, you did a fantastic job. All the girls did that were in Dance the Magic. We just thought it was you know, an amazing part of the show. It was awesome. They it did a was. Great, she did a great job. It did, good job, Maya. We're really proud of you. And uh, it was really fun kind of watching it, you know, sort of knowing somebody exactly. on there. It was great. Excellent. So thanks to you and your family for sharing with us that with us. That was awesome. That was, it was a really good show and really enjoyed talking to the whole family. It's a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Bob Collar is not joining us. It's just a Tim and Don show. Bob is apparently out shopping for diapers and sashes to celebrate New Year's Eve. Well, all right. I know. Apparently, he's having trouble finding a sash that will actually fit. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. He celebrates a little differently than we do. We're pretty low key around here, but you know the Collar family—they're they're a little on the uh, a little oh, on the edge. Oh my goodness! Let's just get on with the show here. Well, let's get on. With it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little wound up. I have, I have my Joffrey's coffee in my hand, mm-hmm. and today I'm having the uh, French silk pie. Can you smell it over there? I can't. It does it always smells really good? Oh. Although I'm not a coffee drinker no. myself, I do absolutely love it when you make the coffee and it just wafts through the house it smells so delicious i know i know Ugh, it's addictive anyway today in the middle of holiday thon 2014 we wanted to talk about something that we've been it's been on our mind for a while and especially with the closing of the maelstrom yeah it's very sad it's very sad we wanted to talk about some extinct disney attractions today we're going to focus on the magic kingdom okay i just thought we'd just talk about them just throw them out there have a little conversation a little bit of reminiscing okay I thought, you know, we're, we're better to start. We'll just start off right off at the top. We're going to the uh, Main Street USA. We're off the monorail. We're walking in. We've scanned our magic bands. Mm-hmm. We don't have tickets. Back in the day, they had those tickets. Back in the day, not only did they have tickets, they actually date stamped yes. the tickets with like the little stamp ink and stamp pad and everything. Oh, yeah. Even before the actual, you know, A, B, C, D, E tickets. Mm-hmm. Or bef- after those, they, yeah. had, they would just... Like a deli stamp or something. They would just yeah. stamp them with ink. It was crazy. Well, I have those in a scrapbook from when the, uh, my band went to there. That's mm-hmm. the kind of tickets that we had. And it state stamped, you know, with the little stamper thing. Yeah, they just hit it just yep. like that. Yep. So I have it, those. And I would get so upset if they would go outside the lines because you wanted to save them like you did the scrapbook mm-hmm. with. I did. I don't want sloppy stamping. Yeah. I don't know. I have to pull the book out to see if it was sloppy <laughs> stamping. It's been a long time. But right off the top, going in. To the right, I think maybe now it's Exhibition Hall, or maybe it's been Exhibition Hall the whole time, was the Walt Disney Story. Mm Mm-hmm. I think we saw that once. We thought we should experience that one time, and I think it was really, really hot, too. Oh, it was hot. So, yeah, anytime you're in air conditioning. (laughs) It's a good thing. (laughs) It's a great thing. But it was just a story about, you know, the story of Walt Disney. I think now they've pretty much uh, packed it in. Well, they didn't pack it in, but they moved it over to One Man's Dream. Mm Mm-hmm. Very similar stuff. I think they have a lot more uh, artifacts over there now than they did before. But that was one of the original things they had at main street usa thought that was Mm -hmm. great another one that i kind of missed these was the plaza swan boats you know i never experienced those at all i didn't go to disney world um the first time i was there i was a senior in high school and it was with our band um we just didn't do that so i don't know when they got rid of those but i totally don't have any recollection of that at all well see i'm cheating here and they ran from 73 to 83 Okay, well then I did not go until eighty six. Okay, so I that's probably why I have no recollection. And I only remember riding them like once or twice. I remember they were they had to have been diesel powered, I think, because I remember they smelled. Ew. Yeah, but um, took on those little waterways, which you know, looking at it now, or well, not so much now, because I know they moved some things around. 
you wouldn't think you'd be a whole lot of water travel. Mm-mm. Like there wouldn't be a whole lot of this. This is actually very interesting. Those things would tight turn on a very tight radius. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of cool. That's cool. It'd kind of be nice if they did that again, but the boats are gone. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. It's always sad to see something go. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't actually a high speed thing. A lot of people probably find them boring anymore, you know? Well, yeah. Not a lot of people are into the nostalgia. You know, when you're uh, on Main Street, you take that little shortcut to Tomorrowland there by the mm-hmm. Plaza restaurant. On, on your left, down by the water, you would see that little like boat dock with a roof on it. Mm-hmm. That was like one of the docks for the Plaza boats. Oh, okay. But I think they might have gotten rid of that with the whole hub thing, possibly. You know, they were digging. and mm-hmm. have to check that out next time we go. I don't remember. Yeah. I know they took some pictures. Yeah. But I know they use it for a lot of uh, photographic opportunities and a lot of... Mm-hmm. You would see it in like... The old style parades when they actually had, you know, the full parade. They show you a whole lot more. Uh, they didn't go out to Alani. They went to Alani a whole lot during that last Christmas Yeah, it was, a, it was big. I would love to go to Alani, but I don't think that's in the Scott financial plans at the moment. Not this year. Not this year. <laughs> Not with a college kid anytime no. soon. <laughs> and he's home for a... Oh, I love having him home. Isn't it great having him home, but... Oh, I missed him so much. Our food budget goes up when he's home. I don't even care. I know. <laughs> I, just, I just miss him a lot. <laughs> uh, today he had two pork chops and I don't know how much of everything else, but anyway. I think an entire bag of potato chips yeah. is missing now, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you remember if you had wings? I don't. Away? I think maybe once, maybe when we were, went with your parents one time mm-hmm. when we were engaged. Yeah. We went, but I don't have much, much recollection of that. This either. is mostly known for it. It was a ride through. It's where a Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin is now. Okay, we did do that. I do remember that now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was very, very cool. It was one of the free... By rides. Eastern. Was it sponsored by Eastern? Yes. East? Okay, I do remember that. Yes. Oh, yeah. I had totally forgotten about that. I know, I know. But uh, it was a great... It was like one of those inspirational rides. She was trying to get you to fly Eastern more often is basically what it was. Mm-hmm. You'd ride through all these great destinations, the Caribbean, Mexico. That's cool. By the time you wanted to get out, I don't even—I don't think they had an Eastern booking agent there, but they should have. Yeah, well, I guess it's a moot point now since Eastern no longer exists. <laughs> That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. There's an equity group that is restarting Eastern Airlines. Really? Yeah, I brought it up here to show you. So uh, everyone, cool. you can check this out. Go to your uh, you know, computers, Eastern Airlines, that Aero, A-E-R-O. Huh. They, are, they bought a bunch of jets. They're hiring pilots, and they're going to relaunch using the same logo. Wow. I thought that was kind of cool. That's interesting. I'm, but yeah, you're right. They should have had like a travel agent at the end of that ride. That really been, oh with all God. the gift shops they had, why not a travel agent? Exactly. So. Yeah, they're hiring everybody. They're hiring technical people, pilots. Although if you're a pilot, you want to work for Eastern Airlines. But it'd be kind of cool if Eastern ended up sponsoring Soren or something like that. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Oh, Very cool. I just thought I'd share that. Eastern, um, Eastern If You Had Wings was one of my favorite rides. Just it just had the music. Mm-hmm. The music made the ride. Mm-hmm. I remember it was a little cheesy in spots, but everyone loves cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so, but after that, it became a. Uh, it eventually became Dream Flight. I didn't care for that one nearly as well. No, Dream Flight wasn't. No. And then it became uh, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Definitely, that's a good which was the exact same ride vehicle, but they slapped a couple ra- lasers on the ride on mm-hmm. the ride vehicle, and you had to throw up some targets, and there you go. Hey, but it's a good one. It is a good one. one of our favorites. It is. I know people don't prefer it as to uh, Toy Story Mania and that stuff now, but it's still soft, soft spot in the heart. Yeah, I probably like Toy Story Mania better, but Buzz Lightyear is right up there. It's a lot of fun. No. Except I can never beat you, but that's all right. Well, mm-hmm. I had years of training. <laughs> <laughs> we can thank the Atari 2600. For all right. <laughs> uh, Mission to Mars. Did you ever do Mission to Mars? I don't. When did it run? It ran. I will tell you here. We are searching our thing. It opened in 1975, and then it closed. 1993. 1993. I, we did. I like that one also. Because we were there a couple times mm-hmm. um, before it closed. Before I'm it sure closed. we did, but I don't know that I have much recollection of that one. Yeah, well, it was a long time ago. Yeah. And it, it was, again. And I'm old, so. <laughs> well, we're both old, so we don't really remember. What we're, we won't remember. In an hour, we won't remember we did this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, you know. But, uh, you know, it was a uh, simulator. You're going to Mars in a, just a spaceship. It was kind of the se- the only uh, screens or viewing was the uh, at the roof or the ceiling and the floor. It's like hmm. you're in a big, uh, a big that. rocket. Yeah. But uh, the seats would move a little bit. It relied on a lot of light mm-hmm. and sound effects to kind of give you the uh, 
illusional flight. Yeah. But then eventually... Does it have any... like? I can't remember Mission to Mars at all, but and maybe I never did ride it. I don't know. But um, was there any like uh, similarity between that and Mission Space? Do Very they similar. Have, do they have similar like storyline? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you weren't really training. I don't remember the. Ex- I would have to find a ride through on that one. But yeah, when I went to a Mission Space, it reminded me a lot of Mission to Mars because you're going to the same planet. Mm-hmm. Although I don't know what spacecraft holds probably like a hundred people. Yeah, who knows? But, you know, back in the day, people were optimistic. Although after our last mission space, I don't think NASA will be calling us to <laughs> to come anytime soon. Well. <laughs> I don't think we'll be the first, uh, what do you call it, civilian astronauts. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to see our pictures up on the wall. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but that was fun, though. I mean, Stephen couldn't stop laughing. I thought he was going to... I don't know, explode or something. I'll tell you what it was. He kept stirring the tanks. That's he, right. he kept flicking all the switches and they're going, is this stir the tanks? <laughs> so have you not learned anything from watching the movie? It's like, don't stir the tanks, please. N- you never stir the tanks. <laughs> Kevin Bacon, do not stir the tanks. I don't care who tells you to do it. <laughs> yeah. Mission to Mars then became an alien encounter. Oh, I do remember that one. I know. I think we only did that once. Uh, yeah, once. I it, think that just was enough. Once. And that- I remember kids at the... I think it was... Unless it was... Uh, Stitch, there were kids outside at the entry, exit saying, I don't want to be in Disney World anymore. Take me home. Exactly. I think it was Alien Encounter for, I mean, that's I think when so we too. first Because it had the harness that came over. So mm-hmm. it's not like you could even, if your child was becoming frightened, it's not like you could even, you know, snatch a child up and... Huddle with them and, you know, yeah, tell them it's okay. Or, or even make it for the exit or something. Right. You know, they just, you were there, you were stuck and your kid was stuck and there was nothing you could do. Yeah. That was awful. As awful as it was, better than Stitch. With oh. the chili dog breath. And the, Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, Stitch is not my thing. I think we took Steven on Stitch thinking it wouldn't be as bad as Alien Encounter. And the scare factor, while I don't think was quite as scary as Alien, Alien Encounter, I think the stink factor and just that about did Steven in because he was little. He was maybe only... yeah. I bet he, I don't know. He was a little guy. He was a little guy at that time. And had a lot I of I thought we didn't even have McKenzie because you and I both no, no, I So he so. probably maybe was four. I'm thinking, yeah. Ugh, what were we thinking? We're terrible and he parents. Still, and he didn't want to go on it again after that even when we no, go back. Yeah, he's a teenager. He's <laughs> like, nah, I can pass that up. So. <laughs> probably has subliminal messages running through his brain or something that my parents tortured me on this ride. <laughs> don't and, do it again. Exactly. And I don't know. If, here's another one. I don't know if I need to turn in my Disney card. We'd only ever did the timekeeper once. Oh, yeah. And we only did it after we heard it was going away. We thought we should do it. Yeah. And it was really good. Yeah. And then they... So what? Then they took brought Stitch back? Is that what they did? Well, the timekeeper... No, timekeeper was us. Where is timekeeper? I don't have Timekeeper any... is where the... Oh, where Monsters Laugh Inc. Laugh Floor is I now. gotcha. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. We only did that the one time. But even before that, it was one of the 360 movies, uh, America the Beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it might have been something else before that. That one was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't like standing for movies. Right. One, you're kind of on your feet all day long anyway. Exactly. And once you hit air conditioning. Down. Yeah, you want to sit down. And they don't like you to sit on the lean rail because it's a lean rail. <laughs> exactly. Not a sitting rail. No. And don't sit on the floor. You're supposed to stand <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> uh, I guess they have their reasons. and I mean, I can see you wouldn't want to trip over somebody who's sitting on the floor. Yeah. I can see that. It's all about liability. But. It is. And, you know, sad, but that's what they have to think about. Yeah. But we get cranky when it's 95 degrees out. And- <laughs> yeah, if only someone wasn't a teacher and could go at any time during the year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Did you ever, this would have been early, did you do the Skyway? Oh, yeah. I, we did the Skyway because we were stupid teenagers doing the Skyway. <laughs> were you doing stupid things in the cars? Yeah, we were doing way stupid things. What were, were you doing? We were dropping ice down on people. Yeah, and we wonder why the Skyway's not there anymore. And we wonder why they're not allowed to take food and drink on rides anymore <laughs> <Exactly>. either. Because <laughs> we were stupid teenagers. doing. Because we were totally unsupervised. Right. We were, you know, sophomores through seniors in high school, and they basically said, here you go. Have a great time. You need to meet at this spot, you know, to get ready for the parade. And right. that was the end of it. That's it? There was no checking in with chaperones. There was no being with your chaperone. I think the only time I saw my chaperone was when she said, this door is to stay shut. Do not open it again until I open it for you at 7 a.m. Yeah. So, yeah, there were no... <laughs> 
Yeah, we were stupid teenagers doing stupid. Uh, I mean, relatively stupid things. I mean, we were dropping ice on people. Right. We weren't, you know, doing right. anything we were dropping destructive. Bricks. No, 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 no. But well, still. <laughs> you know, the Skyway at Disneyland? Mm-hmm. Apparently, people were doing inappropriate Oh my! No, Just we non doing, Disney, non Disney we things. We were not doing non Disney, Disney activities. <laughs> no, there was there was no. I mean, there was only a, a right ice stupid dropping. teenager stuff. <laughs> but uh, talk about pressure. <laughs> yeah, good grief! <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, let's make our way. We took the Skyway. Now we're over in Fantasyland. Mm-hmm. I'm going old school. Mickey Mouse Review. Do you remember this one? Uh, I don't know. I mean, this one ended. I can't even remember how old. I, I, I'm looking it up now. I remember loving this as far as a oh, show no, would go for being a kid. 1980. No. 1980. And I remember seeing that a few times. Wow. And I was so angry at the future Tokyo Disneyland because that's where they took it. Oh, did they? Yeah, they packed it up and they took it to Tokyo Disneyland. Oh, yeah. No, I never got to see that. And I think just recently I, it might be done there now too. But I mean, Aww. was not a happy person. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And you can't talk about Fantasyland without going to the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh, I love 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That was one of the first rides we did together because I had not experienced any. I mean, honestly, I don't have much of a recollection of going in 1986 with mm-hmm. the band. Um because we didn't have a lot of time in the parks. Right. And there was only just Magic Kingdom and Epcot. And... You know, we were obligated to do other things like the parade and we did a concert and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. So you're um, busy and you can't do everything as it it is. Yeah. And it was spring break. So it was really, really crowded. So we didn't do a whole lot. So the first time we went with your parents when um, right after we had gotten engaged, I think that was one of the first rides we rode was 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I think so. And I thought, what a corny little ride. It was corny. But how fun to be adults and on a corny little ride that just makes you smile. Exactly. And I missed that. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. And didn't the, uh, where was it? Where was it? Was it Cozumel? We did like the semi-submersibles. We did one in Cozumel and we did one in Grand Cayman. Oh, Grand, Cay- Grand Cayman was a really good one. Yes. Because the water was much more clear. And we could see, a, was there like a shipwreck down there? Mm-hmm, a couple of them. It was kind of 20,000 leagues under the sea-ish. Mm-hmm. It was. That's where we saw the Barracuda. Yes. Too. Yeah. It was really cool. Yes. So, yeah, I really, that was, I miss, I was sad when they were taking that away. So, and then is that where Little Mermaid is now? The Little Mermaid ride or um, similar? That's where like a lot of that stuff is now from the Just new fantasy land, kind there. of in that area. I was kind of hoping they would do the Little Mermaid ride where it would be very similar to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah. You know, where it would be actually in water, right. not just simulated with lights and paint and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, know. it was when we did Little Mermaid, it was very cute. It was. And the nice thing about the Little Mermaid ride is, is it does tell the whole story yeah. of the Little Mermaid. And it's a nice long ride. And it really does kind of refresh you before you have to get off the ride and do something else. It wasn't what I expected because it was another one I didn't watch the ride through beforehand. Mm-hmm. I don't like to watch the ride throughs normally before we do something. Yeah. Although, it was not, I, I liked Little Mermaid. I thought it was pretty good. It was, like I said, nothing that I would ever get Fast Pass Plus for again. Right. But um, certainly would ride that again because it was cute. It was cute. And little kids would love, would love it and oh, do love absolutely. it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Some adults forget that Fanny Island is mostly for the kids anyway. It is, but, you know. Because, you know, with Seven Dwarfs Mind Train, they're like, this wasn't a very exciting roller coaster. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's geared towards, you know, six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds for the most part. Absolutely. So it's one of those rides everybody can have to fun together absolutely that's that's what disney is all about is you know that was what his goal was for adults to have fun with their children not just watch their children experience carnival rides and whatnot Mm -hmm. so that the whole family can experience everything together and i think disney does a fantastic job at that and making sure that um it's accessible to everyone right so because you only have a limited amount of time to do things with your kids it is and it's one thing that we love about disney it's always been accessible you know, even, you know, my mom who has some mobility issues and, you know, is in, um, just needs a wheelchair to get around like Disney World. She doesn't normally right. use one during. We need to get her back her, there. I know. I, I really want to take She would her. have a great time. Oh, my, and my dad is just itching to do all the countries at Epcot, send him and Mackenzie off together. We need to sneak him down there. I would, I would just love Little to. Little chloroform. <laughs> I don't think I'd have to do that. He would just be like, let me know when I need to be packed. Exactly. <laughs> He'd be all for it. Oh. All right, back on track. Back now. on track. I'm sorry. We took a little bit of a tangent there. <laughs> <laughs> How, oh. Oh, no. Mr. Toad's wild ride. Mr. Toad. We love Mr. Toad. I did like Mr. Toad. 
That was fun. The best part about Mr. Toad is that there were a lot of steering wheels. Yeah. And so that if you had more than one child, everybody could drive. Now, didn't Mr. Toad, I was thinking about this earlier today, have a, like the end of the scene was like you were heading towards a train, oh. like right before you ended up in, in hell. I think it was like an oncoming train or a car or something that kind of. Oh my, the storyline's totally lost on me. Well. Oh my goodness. I was just thinking that you got kind of the same element. <laughs> uh-huh. In the, uh, what, test track? Or at least you did when, you know, the truck was coming on. Oh, yeah, you. okay. Because all these rides you can kind of see like hints of in other rides. Oh, Like yeah. a lot of like the cliff diving and some of the things from If You Had Wings you can see in Mexico now. Right. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Although. I, I wonder how many people like really, I never really would picked up on that and put those things together. You really are a Disney geek. I know. Really? Huh? I should really do a show or something about it, just to, <laughs> as a place to vent. Oh, my goodness. I know. Yeah. I'll have to find somebody I work with, see if they'd want to do something with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Toad was good. And I think everybody I think everybody knows about the little tip to uh, Mr. Toad with uh, Pooh. Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell them about that? Well, in the beginning of the Winnie the Pooh ride, you see Mr. Toad handing off the deed to the ride to... Is it to Owl, I think? Uh, I think it's to Owl. I, think so. I don't think it's to Poo. Right, right, right. It's in, to Owl. It's in the Poo ride, yeah. So that's good. But remember, we went um, on our honeymoon, we went to Disney World, and just by pure luck and coincidence, um, our good friends, Tracy and Jim and oh, their yeah. kids, um, happened to be going to Disney World the exact same time, staying at the exact same hotel. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and Allison, who was had just turned two she's might have not, not quite been two and a half just absolutely adored you oh she was adorable and me and she just wanted to be with us and not her parents and i think we took her on mr toad i think so a couple yeah. times i think they rode with us and tracy and jim had a good old time in their own vehicle. yeah i don't know what's up with that hmm. <laughs> i don't know what happened with that one uh, but uh, i yeah i remember riding mr toad with the jeffrey kids that's right hey we were the one on the concierge level at the Contemporary. That's right. Oh, I think Tracy was mad. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure she was mad. Too. But the boys loved it because they could. I think Tracy told them the code or we told them the code or something. They could come They'd up get and cookies. get cookies <laughs> and get the cookies. They were like, what, one floor down or a couple floors down? They were a couple floors they're in this, down. They were also in the tower. We were yeah. all Magic Kingdom view, I believe, though. Exactly. I, that was like the first time I think Disney ever really, really freaked me out was um, – they said, oh, you're the honeymooners. We've upgraded you to the concierge floor. And I just couldn't figure out how they knew we were on our honeymoon. Right. That was really freaky. I mean, I'm sure you, when you made the reservation, I'm sure I must you have must mentioned have mentioned it. it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of freaky. But that's the pixie dust. You don't see it coming. No, you don't. You, you can't go out there and try to make pixie dust. No, no. You either got to just experience it or pass it on. You got to be a flow goer. You got to go with the flow. That's right. Yeah, that was really good, though. And then oh, Snow White's Scary Adventures. <laughs> Now, that one was a little scary. It was for little really kids. Yeah, it was. You know, I think I read in one of the books, um, one of the guidebooks where the mom was venting about, um, you know, Snow White and how scary it was. And Grandpa was, you know, there. And his Grandpa just kept saying, where is Snow White? Where in the heck is Snow White? Because the witch just kept popping oh, out at him. Was that when you were supposed to be Snow White in the ride? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he didn't quite get that. No. <laughs> No, that was lost on some so, people, but that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but uh, that closed in 2012 as they were making right way for the new Fantasyland. Mm -hmm. And they figured, you know, we can't have a Snow White ride and have a Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. That's a, that's a lot of Snow White. Right. So now that's what that's about the uh, Princess Fairy Tale meet and greet is now or something. I think so. So it's a place to get yeah. pictures. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we are we wrapped up Fantasyland or we're moving on. All right. We'll move on. Let's continue around. Let's go to Liberty Square. All right. Oh, the, the keel boats. Oh, yeah. Remember the keel Mike boats? Think. I think there's, there's still one boat. parked there, I think, maybe at the dock. I think so. Just to kind of look at. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you who does a really good story about Mike Fink oh. is uh, Stephen Kellogg. He writes a really good children's book. Oh, really? He writes a lot of great children's book. I mean, he has one about Mike Fink. He has, you know, I think he's done Paul Bunny and a lot of American Tall Tale. Mm -hmm. Books and I mean Stephen Kellogg is one of my most favorite children's authors. Okay, but he does do a a story about Mike Fink and it tells his whole story. That's very cool. Yeah, it's good. Excellent. But I think that just toured the waters like with the uh, mm -hmm. with the riverboat. I don't, I don't think that stopped anywhere. No. Oh, that was awesome. I remember. I think I rode on top of it once. And it kind of felt like it was kind of top heavy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like swaying back and forth. I didn't feel too terribly comfortable with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well. 
Uh, let's go to Frontierland. They explore canoes. They don't have the canoes anymore. No, I don't think I ever did the canoes. I think they were long gone before. Who would want to do the canoes? I don't want to canoe over to the island in 95 degree heat <laughs> under my own power. I'm never going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they shoved you in a canoe in a canoe with 40 other people. There you go. If 70 of you could paddle, <laughs> you might get somewhere. <laughs> I guess so. Oh, oh my, my gosh. goodness. Oh, wait, wait, wait. oh, let's go to Adventureland. Now, they had the original Tiki Room. Mm-hmm. And then they got rid of the original Tiki Room. Right. And it was under new management. Mm-hmm. And then they had a fire. Yeah. That was sad. It was very sad. But now the original one's pretty much back. I edited it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last time we went, though, remember there was a an older lady that had yes. a medical emergency, and so they had to stop the show. And Yeah. I think they had just finished the first course of in the tiki 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 room yeah we didn't no, get very far no it wasn't i don't i i mean they usher you out they don't want you standing there and i wouldn't want to if it was me i wouldn't want people standing there right. staring no, at no, me, no. but hopefully so, she's okay yeah so i don't know if she, they had a problem they had to clean up or maybe she was just hot and they just wanted to get she everyone passed out, out. It, was, it was super she, hot it was just really hot that day it was very very humid as well right and I think they thought, well, you know, she was an older, you know, lady. Get her in, get her in the cool, and, right. and I just don't think that that was enough. I think no. she needed probably some hydration and stuff. She probably wasn't drinking enough. I think so, so too. There's another tip: when it's super, super hot, even if you don't feel thirsty, you should be drinking Ugh, absolutely a lot. What's our favorite tip for that? Oh, they'll give you a cup of ice, and you can fill it up in any. They'll give you ice, free ice water right. at any of the restaurants there. And sometimes we freeze water bottles. Oh yeah, we freeze them and put them in our little cinch sack to carry and by the time you're thirsty they're pretty well thawed and the water's still nice and cool and yeah. it's good that is a scott family without original but nope. it works for us it so works, it does it works <laughs> for us and you know okay we're gonna wait we're almost done Aww. i'm sure we could go into a whole lot more but we're you know this is the holiday time we got lots of stuff content to turn turn That's out right. there you remember mickey's birthday land no mickey's birthday land <laughs> was that little land it was supposed to be temporary Mm-hmm. And they were putting it up between Tomorrowland and Fan- Fantasyland as a place to get visit Mickey, get mm-hmm. pictures taken for his 60th birthday. Yeah. And then it caught on pretty well. It became very popular. Mm-hmm. It was so popular that they wanted to keep it going, but you can't only have Mickey's birthday land so long. Right. Before you're celebrating 61 and a half. Yeah. 62. <laughs> <laughs> so they came up with the more uh, evergreen Mickey Starland. Mm-hmm. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Just a different name. And then that became Toontown Fair. That's right. Toontown Fair is now gone. It is. But it was there for a long time. <laughs> it was. And I think I'll just never, ever forget Stephen's little face. He Again, it was probably the trip he was for. And we went to ride Goofy's Barnstormer. And yes. there was just nobody in line. It was I don't know if it was extra magic hours or we just were there super early, you know, before mm-hmm. anybody. And um he just he loved it so much and when we got back when we were the ride was over he asked could we please go again and the ride operator said sure and maybe a couple people got off or got on whatever and we yep. stayed on and probably about the fourth or fifth trip around i finally had to tell him we are now done sweetheart right <laughs> because mama is not doing well <laughs> well it wasn't a high roller coaster but it was it very was zippy it was zippy had some tight turns it did it was a zippy little coaster that was a good little coaster for yeah. a, you know, someone's first coaster oh my goodness he loved it he did love that he had said of mckenzie when she was old enough to ride yeah when we took her but yeah it's a zippy little coaster <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun oh my goodness i think that does it yeah. I think we've covered mo- most of what was in the Magic Kingdom for as far as extinct attractions. I think so. If you could bring back one attraction, one. which one would you bring back? Ooh, that, that's a tough one. That's a good question. I, my heart wants to say if you had wings, mm-hmm. I'm not sure that would carry on now. Yeah. You'd have to have some really updated technology for that to work. I'd keep the music the same, though. Mm-hmm. That was what everybody loved was the music. Yeah. Oh, what would I go to? I almost want to say Swan Boats. Yeah. Yeah. Without the diesel. Yeah, maybe something like an electric hybrid or something. Yeah. Oh, maybe 20,000 leagues. You got to pick one. Pick I do. one. I, do. I said one. You said one. Oh, I'm going 20,000 leagues now. Oh, that was what I was going to do. I'll go Mr. Toad then. Oh, that'd be good too. Yeah. There's so many. There are. Good thing we didn't also throw in Epcot. We'd be here all night. No kidding. We'll have to do that on a future show. More extinct attractions with Tim and Don. There you go. Or Don and Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, since we would bring back one show... Or bring back one attraction. If there's one attraction in the Magic Kingdom you think needs to be eliminated. Stitch. (laughs) 
<laughs> you didn't even have to think about I didn't that have one. To think about that one. That was the one I was going to go for too. That's yeah, a safe one. Yeah. I, I'm going to. I've said this before. I would almost see the Grand Prix Raceway go. You know what? I'll tell you what, the, but that is one of our kids' most favorite attractions. I think it's all kids. I remember when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I loved it because I could drive something. I always yeah. liked driving. Yeah. But you would think in Tomorrowland, the land of the future, we've maybe have hybrid cars. So and maybe not, they and just not need to update, update how the vehicles look. Maybe. I don't know. Quiet them down a little bit. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I think even on our last trip, it, McKinsey was still all about that and she was 13 and That's she true. really loved it and steven did too yeah he did and he had a license at that point <laughs> he does so <laughs> but he can he's still we have to tell we saw that little placard in his car do not bang the car in front of you <laughs> 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 yep that's for sure and knock knock on wood he hasn't banged a car in front yeah. of him yet so. thankfully oh my so, goodness i hope he continues to be a good safe driver and hey, he'll be good yeah he's good to go so well, I think we should wrap it up. All right, then. Oh, well, everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm Tim Scott. You can find me on Twitter at Resort Loop Tim. We have the website, resortloop.com. You can't find Dawn anywhere, but if you have any messages for her, send them to me or hop over on the website. We have a little uh, contact form there. I'll see she gets it. We're close. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow Bob. He's all over social media. But like I said, he's out shopping for, for uh, diapers and sashes <laughs> and trying to get ready for the new year. Oh, goodness. <laughs> everybody, you've been listening to The Gateway to the Magic. And as Bob would say, see you, everybody. Attention, please. Eastern Airlines Flight 19, your holiday cruise to the emerald beauty of a Puerto Rican rainforest, now ready for departure.